Some days when you look online, all you see is bad news. But then, other days, we hear these feel-good stories about a billionaire like Jeff Bezos riding a rocket into space. I mean, that's uplifting. And then there's a story about how in just a few years, another billionaire, Elon Musk, is on his way to becoming the first ever trillionaire in the history of the world. Amazing, right? But at the same time, you really have to ask yourself the question, do we think there might be some kind of a connection between the fact that right around the same time one guy is about to become a trillionaire, everything else seems to be totally fucking falling apart? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, there is. Stay with me here as I walk you through it. During the pandemic, America's billionaires saw their wealth increase by 70%. Elon Musk added a cool $121 billion to his fortune last year alone, bringing his net worth up to $277 billion, and leaving number two man Jeff Bezos with his humble $195 billion in the platinum speckled dust. Meanwhile, workers at Elon Musk's car company, Tesla, sued over what they called nightmarish conditions in its factories. And health officials called out Jeff Bezos for inhumane production standards at Amazon, resulting in more than 24,000 serious worker injuries. Of course, Elon and Jeff are not alone. By keeping wages and costs as low as humanly possible, and by not paying their fair share of taxes, large corporations and the billionaires who run them are enjoying record profits across the board. As for the rest of us, after you adjust for inflation, folks are making around the same as they were 40 years ago. Income inequality has hit its highest level ever since the Census Bureau started tracking it back when Lyndon Johnson was president. Today, the 745 billionaires in our country are worth more than the bottom 60% of all American households combined. I mean, don't get me wrong. The fact that anyone can strike it rich in America is one of the things that makes our country great. You really can start from nothing and become a self-made billionaire. Statistically, you've got around one in 500,000 something odds. So as Jim Carrey said in Dumb and Dumber, you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah. But it takes more than just hard work. It takes other billionaires making the rules about how ultra rich people pay their taxes. Or to be more specific, it takes not paying taxes at all whenever possible. In 2007 and 2011, Jeff Bezos, the second richest man in the world, paid zero income tax. In 2018, Elon Musk, the first richest man in the world, also paid zero income tax. Billionaire investor Carl Icahn has managed to not pay any personal income tax at least twice. So, how do they do it? By following the law. Really complicated versions of the law that other incredibly rich people have come up with over the years. Some of the techniques involve moving money offshore through complex schemes with names like double Irish with a Dutch sandwich. But it can also be done right here at home where billionaires enjoy a wide assortment of loopholes out of the reach of most Americans. Only the very wiliest manage zero dollars in income tax. But in recent years, the 25 richest Americans managed to pay an average of just 3.4% of their newly acquired wealth in taxes. So where can we look to find the cutting edge ideas it would take to go head to head with these guys and turn this vexing problem of income inequality around? How about Dwight D. Eisenhower? Back in the 1950s, when Eisenhower was president, the marginal tax rate for America's highest earners was not 37% as it is today. It was 94%. That's right. For every dollar of income above 200,000, which equals just over 3 million in today's dollars, American citizens would be required to pay 94% of their income. If you made less than the equivalent of today's 3 million a year, you were cool. To put it in perspective, in 2021, Elon Musk paid just over $11 billion in taxes. Admittedly, that's quite a bit of cash. But by Eisenhower rules, he would have had to pay approximately $114 billion in taxes. Huge difference. Under Eisenhower era tax rates, if Elon Musk had actually paid his fair share of taxes last year, the US could offer two years of free college to every American and still have a few billion left in change. And if all billionaires started paying their fair share, in just 10 years, the US would generate almost $9 trillion, enough to cover the entire Build Back Better infrastructure budget and a couple of years of Medicare for all Americans. Look, Eisenhower was no socialist. He was a war hero Republican, one who presided over the greatest period of economic growth the middle class has ever seen, where regular working families could afford to buy homes, put their kids through college, and even take a trip to Acapulco every year. 
For almost three decades after Eisenhower took office, the tax rate for the wealthiest Americans never dropped below 70%. But eventually, ultra-moneyed interests managed to bring it down to where it is today. But what about the rest of us? Last year, we experienced the Great Resignation, where more than 38 million Americans decided they would rather be unemployed than work in a crappy job with low pay and little or no benefits. So how do we turn things around? Let's once again look to Dwight D. Eisenhower, who reminded us that the future of this republic is in the hands of the American voter. That's you, folks. The only power working Americans have is to demand rules that are fair for all of us. I mean, this is the power of our democracy. If we want fair wages, affordable health care, and education, and a country where everyone, including billionaires, pay their fair share, we've got to vote for leaders who are going to make it happen. We have to support unions and, and stand up for a living wage for all. And once we win true progressive taxation, once billionaires start paying their fair share, if someone asks the question, should there be trillionaires, we can say, sure, good luck. Because if you can figure out how to become a trillionaire on a truly even playing field, then by golly, you've earned it. This is George C. Tronzer reporting for Bold Rethink. Go to boldrethink.org.